So, did you prepare any uh, slides for us today? Mm, no slides, nothing at all. Just like last time, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, uh, totally unprepared, and uh, I, I thought you could show pictures uh, like we did last time. But if you can't do that, uh, we'll have to improvise a little with uh, like holding stuff into the camera and. Uh, no, I got you. Yeah, I can bring in a picture. Mm -hmm. it just, I just need a second to click some buttons here. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I can I can send you more pictures, but because right now I've I've only sent you um, pictures of one project, and I I wanted to uh, send you an email with pictures per product. We we want to talk about if that's okay with you. But um, yeah, if, if okay, then um, uh, did it, did it, uh, let me. Yep. It'll be a little clunky on my end because I have to do some manual work here, but uh, we can show them. And, and they'll look uh, yeah. they'll look nice and tight. So go ahead and send them over. What the heck is this? Okay. Sorry, everyone. The, for the folks on on YouTube and, and in the room, I'm looking at the pictures. I don't even know what this is. Like, I mean, I. I, I uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're all going to learn about this uh, at the same time here. Um, so Jens. Uh, uh, I know it's been a year since we we uh, spoke last. Um, do you want to just give like a, a five minute update on sort of what's been happening on your side? I know, uh, you know, we talked about the floods uh, being an impact. You know, obviously as a component supplier or, or, or finished product supplier, you're dealing with the pandemic and all of the uh, supply chain challenges. So I can imagine it's been a pretty rough year from uh, where you're coming from. It was, yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't even know where to start because uh, um, you, you've had me um, send pictures and stuff. I, I don't know. Are we live yet? What's that? Uh, we're live yet? <laughs> yeah, we're live. We've been live the whole time. Oh, okay. Good. Um, yeah, uh, one year. Um, Component shortage was was actually a topic just after we uh, we talked last time um, because uh, I started developing the ACA 1234 and um, I've made it a habit of um, um, buying the components whenever or at least checking availability uh, of the components when I design them in because um, yeah if, if you design them in and maybe even have samples at home uh, and, and you can build a prototype. Uh, it's going to be kind of boring if you assemble without components uh, for mass production. So yeah, um, uh, I, I talked to the uh, to the distributor, and um, they said, "Oh yeah, yeah, these are available. Uh, we can ship in February." And I was like, "Okay, that's a bit long. What's happening here?" It's like, uh, and um, yeah. Um, the lady explained to me uh, that yeah, uh, orders are coming in, uh, and um, they can uh, they can currently not keep up. Uh, but um, yeah, it, that that's gonna all work out next year and everything. Um, so yeah, place the orders for mass production, and um, when it was. Um, uh, you were okay, then, uh, yeah, I, I was I was talking about, um, yeah, how chip shortage um, uh, uh, approached, um, uh, uh, or, yeah, how I learned about chip pro uh, shortage coming up, and that was uh, really in late October of last year, uh, when I started designing the 1234. Let me try to hold this in the camera. Yeah. Maybe you can yeah, that see that. Great. Okay. Yep, CF okay, slot, um, FPGA slot. O30 slot. Okay, and um, yeah, when when I started buying components, uh, it was like yeah, uh, delivery time a little over four months, and um, I was really surprised um, to uh, to get that kind of uh, delivery dates. But um, I placed the orders because I, I was pretty sure that uh, that it would take me quite some time to get this uh, to get this working, um, and. Um, uh, yeah, when when February came, um, maybe some of the Europeans um, uh, followed the news. Um, uh, I uh, I still didn't get my my components in time because um, there was a ship in the uh, in the Suez Canal um, that uh, that blocked every uh, uh, that that blocked I don't know hundreds of other ships, 
and lots and lots of goods, including semiconductors, didn't reach Europe. And um, so uh, that was um, another holdup. Um, I think that delayed it by three weeks or so. And um, um, but then uh, some other components that were actually confirmed um, for uh, uh, for other dates, um, they were just not available. And I um, we we didn't get any. Um, uh, any updates uh, un until the uh, the confirmed delivery dates really um, uh, really came and went, and then the distributors said, "Yeah, we can, couldn't get the components. Currently, don't have any uh, um, uh, any dates and so on." And since I haven't um, ordered the PCBs at that time, um, I did a few last-minute changes. So I, I changed the microcontroller. I uh, actually changed um, uh, some, uh, even some logic components on the board, uh, just to keep it available or to to, to make it possible to um, uh, uh, to produce them this year. And um, I'm pretty happy that uh, that this worked out for the 1234, and um, it also worked out for other projects uh, like the um, uh, the new Flicker fixer and Division ECS V3, and um, yeah. Many of the designs that I uh, have and that we currently um, produce on a regular basis, they just needed redesigns this year, uh, just because components were not available. And that is um, that was extremely time consuming. And um, yeah, um, it's it's not only chips. Um, maybe you can bring up uh, uh, one of the pictures that I've sent you. Um, let's uh, um, go for a project that um, maybe only a few have heard about yet. Uh, that is this uh, CF card adapter. Uh, I'll hold it into the camera so you can maybe. Do you see that? Uh, yeah, we can see it. Okay. Um, maybe you can um, uh, bring up uh, the pictures that I have sent you uh, in an earlier email. Um, I don't see anything. There's a huge lag on the. Um, uh, no, actually, I haven't sent you the uh, the CF cards, uh, yeah, CF card pictures. Uh, CF pictures. Oh, that that's 23 megabytes. I hope your inbox won't explode. Yeah, we'll see if that works. So, what is uh, what's special about the CF adapter? Um, we started developing this uh, a few months back when um, a few, um, yeah, I, I, okay, I, I might have to start somewhere else. When, when I announced the, uh, the, the 1234 with the CF card slot, with a local CF card slot that, uh, that really has impressive performance, um, uh, some, some people were saying, ah, oh, great, I'm going to replace my 1233N. And um, I was like, okay, no, I, I, I don't want that um, because the, uh, the supply of, of chips, um, especially 68030 CPUs, is so tight that uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't really make sense uh, for anyone who already has an 030 accelerator to buy yet another one. So we started uh, um, requesting from these people, well, why do you think of switching? Because the 1233N has the IDE speeder that, uh, that should give you sufficient speed. And um, they came back with, yeah, well, uh, it's got nice speed, but I get read write errors all the time. And um, uh, apparently um, nobody really uh, reported this. And we, um, we started getting into the, uh, the, the details of the problem. And um, the one common thing all these uh, people had was that they were using a CF card adapter that was not buffered. And, and in some cases, they have even used uh, quite long cables. And um, uh, so what I did was I dug out um, a very old design from 1996 um, that was uh, for back then for CD-ROMs, for connecting CD-ROMs. And um, uh, back then I, I made a, a buffered adapter because the IDE port of the Amiga 1200 uh, and, the, and the 600 is really not made to be used on, uh, with, with long cables or multiple devices. And um, CF cards, in turn, are not really made 
to drive huge loads on the data bus and the Amiga 1200 is a huge load. So um, essentially the uh, uh, using a CF card in an Amiga 1200 or an Amiga 600 means um, you're operating things out of spec. And um, my CF card adapter here um, has um, the, the prime goal of people not wanting the 1234, um, especially the ones who already have the 1233N. Um, uh, this um, buffers the IDE port. It um, puts the, uh, the CF card in a nice and neat place um, where the flicker fixer, the Indivision AGA Mark III fits. I have done my best. Maybe you can bring up the pictures. Uh, did they arrive yet? Yeah, no, I, I had a picture overlay. Uh, you just can't see it, but it's on the stream. Okay. Um, maybe you can see on that picture that um, the connector towards the Amiga 1200 um, looks kind of funny. It has um, uh, circuit board parts uh, right next to it, and it has pins that are closed on the edges. And that is meant to keep the user from plugging it in the wrong way. Very nice. It's kind of hard and to get that on the, on the photo you sent, but I, I can see that it's definitely interesting. Okay. The, um, yeah, the reason why I, I started designing this was that um, one of our testers, one of the um, uh, guys who, um, who, who's also doing product management in iComp, um, kudos to Tim if you're watching, um, he actually managed to, uh, uh, to put this thing on, uh, one of the prototypes, to put it on the wrong way. And um, what happened was that the Amiga survived, the adapter survived, but the CF card died. Mm. And um, that got me thinking because, um, I mean, this hobby is supposed to be fun. This hobby is um, about preservation. And if you, um, uh, if you say, okay, well, it's just the CF card, it's the customer's thing, and it's, um, yeah, uh, and of course, if the customer is making that mistake of uh, uh, putting it on the wrong way or uh, shift it, um, then, um, or offset is, is what you probably say. I, I don't know the right word. Yeah. Um, um, well, that's the customer's fault and we don't care. Um, I don't think like that. I want the customer to, um, well, ideally not be able to make a mistake, but in this case, if the CF card dies, um, there's, there's the danger of uh, the person who is losing that CF card um, being a programmer, and he might have some, uh, uh, some source codes without backup on that CF card. <laughs> And that is something I really uh, don't want to be responsible for. So I want this adapter to be as, um, yeah, foolproof mm, as possible. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, functionality-wise, um, it, uh, it buffers the, uh, the, the address and data bus. It isolates the accesses from, uh, from, from other I.O. that is also using those same lines. That is uh, primarily the clock port, but also the PCMCIA port. Um, and uh, those accesses are completely shielded from the, uh, from the CF card. And the, um, the final thing we did is um, uh, look at the LED of the Amiga 1200, the activity LED, because some CF cards have this, uh, this property that um, uh, the, uh, the activity LED is always on, yep. and uh, during activity, uh, it, it only changes brightness. And that's just not nice. And uh, I decided, okay, if, if I wanted to want to make something really good, then uh, it also needs to fix that, uh, that activity LED. And um, that's what the adapter does. I'm trying to show it here, because, uh, yeah. Um, you, you don't see any LED here. Uh, the, the, circuit, um, the, the circuit just makes sure that the, um, the LED of the Amiga 1200 really turns off no matter what card you have, and it turns on when you have activity, and that's it. So I want so, to ask about 
um, the what looks like a double-sided adapter. I think this is your new a new product that you're announcing or something. It's the uh, the file that ends in 23 JPEG. I have it on the screen here, so everyone else can see it. Okay, I'll, I'll have to uh, the file that ends in 23. Let me bring that up on my screen. Um, 23.jpg, whatever that is. Yeah, uh, maybe you uh, you switch to the next one to the 24, because that shows the um, uh, the predecessor, the proof of concept. Um, do you have it on screen now? Yeah. Okay, um, what you see here is an ACA 500 plus, my proof of concept adapter in the middle, and an ACA 1221 LC in, uh, uh, at the end. The 1221 LC is a 68020 accelerator for the Amiga 1200, but also for the uh, ACA 500 plus. And um, yeah, this combination is nice and fast. It gives you a 32-bit uh, performance, uh, almost uh, Amiga 3000 performance on an Amiga 500. But uh, one key property of the uh, ACA 500 Plus is not available with that combination, and that is the uh, cloaking device. The cloaking device of the ACA 500 Plus um, has always been a strong point. You can, uh, uh, you can reduce the Amiga 500 um, to a cycle exact 68,007 megahertz with the exact kickstart and uh, memory, uh, memory layout that, uh, that a certain game might need. And um, uh, there is really no need to, to ever detach the uh, ACA 500 plus. But um, if you have the ACA 1221 LC connected, then um, you cannot use the, uh, the cloaking device because the 1221 LC uh, cannot be switched off in software. Mm. And this, this thing that, that plugs in between the two um, uh, here with the, um, well, I'm, I'm pointing there, you don't see it. I'm, uh, so uh, just imagine I'm pointing uh, wherever you uh, have the, um, that picture now. Um, that green PCB with the switch, um, that's really uh, just a uh, proof of concept. I wanted to make sure that uh, my idea of switching off the 1221 LC is working. That did work. And um, uh, just yesterday, uh, a new sample PCB arrived, so you can now switch back to the, uh, to the file and, uh, that ends in 23. That is the, um, the, the prototype that still needs some verification, but it doesn't have a mechanical switch anymore, but uh, a pure software switch. So um, the combination of the ACA 500 plus and the 1221 LC will have the, uh, the ability of uh, soft switching nice. the ACA uh, uh, 1221 LC and also other cards, even older ones, the 1220 and the 1230, uh, I, I believe it's, it, uh, it's also compatible with the uh, 31. Uh, it definitely is compatible with the 1232 and the 1233, not the 1233N, because the N is soft switchable already. And once again, this is in an effort to reduce demand for the ACA 1234. And uh, <laughs> really, um, because That's bad. Uh, you have to build products to reduce demand for a new product you have coming out because of the chip situation. Yeah, there's really too many people who said, yeah, I have an, an accelerator already, but I want that new one. And I always had in the back of my head, uh, we don't have that many. I mean, CPUs are limited, chips are li uh, limited. And um, yeah, um, I, I, I'd much rather um, have more people in, in the hobby uh, uh, rather than uh, just a few, but everyone has like three or four accelerators at home. Um, so uh, I, I really want to make sure that um, that enough people um, can get um, an accelerator, and of um, of course, uh, yeah. If you're really looking for that tiny feature, uh, that that soft switch off, then uh, um, I would really prefer um, selling uh, a cheap adapter rather than an expensive accelerator that might be uh, missing in the market for others uh, who might be returning to the uh, Amiga 1200 after so and so many years. Because, um, I mean, like I said, this is about preservation and not everyone who has been creative on the Amiga um, has returned yet and has um, 
uh, put his uh, his creations, be it software or uh, be it um, music or graphics or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm sure there is so much out there that uh, still uh, should be preserved, should be uploaded into uh, yeah, AmyNet or um, other archives. Um, we, uh, we should keep some hardware available for them. And um, I mean, uh, I'm really not into this for the money. Um, making money with the Amiga is, is really not possible anymore. Um, so I'd much, much rather uh, sell these, uh, these accelerators to people who really need them and um, not just want them because, yeah, well, it's a little bit better than what I already have. I, uh, I'd, I'd really prefer if uh, people um, are satisfied with what they already have. And um, yeah, just adding one little feature um, that might, might do the trick for them and saves them money. That's great. So um, I want to ask a, a couple of questions. One of the questions is around uh, 040, 060 accelerators uh, that came by on YouTube. Do you have any comments on those? I, I can't even recall if you've announced those products or. Yeah, I, I did announce them um, actually a few years ago, and uh, it turned out to be really complex. So I have uh, I have put uh, Peter Wendrich um, on on logic development. We do have prototypes running, but. Um, yeah, Peter um, is on sick leave since summer of this year, since June uh, of this year, and uh, he is he is making a good recovery. He is working a few hours per week again, and um, I'm I'm hoping that uh, he'll be back on the ACA 1240, 1260 um, either later this month or next month. So um, that project is not forgotten. I uh, I mean <laughs> then. <laughs> The, the, the scary situation here is I have all the chips in stock, but the development is not yet done, so I can't start production. I um, yeah, but uh, like I said, this is, uh, this is not forgotten. And um, yeah, if, if you're really looking for more performance, then uh, don't buy the 1234. Leave the 1234 for those who, who really need it. Um, and uh, yeah, wait for the 1240, 1260. Got it. So um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, if you could just briefly talk about the work that you've done on your newer cards, like the 1234, to accelerate the I or sorry, the, the uh, N version accelerates IDE IO, uh, correct? And the, the LCL. What did you do there to achieve that? Um, this is actually something that I have tried on my very very first accelerator, the ACA 1230, uh, the synchronous one. Um, uh, on the prototype, I have tried um, accelerating the IDE because um, uh, I always knew that just the fast processor and fast memory, um, it does accelerate a lot of things in the Amiga, but the, the look and feel of, uh, of the machine is really uh, defined by, um, by the reaction time if you click on something. And uh, clicking on something often means uh, you need to load from hard drive. So I tried accelerating the hard drive uh, accesses, and um, back when I did the uh, the 1230, I think that was in 2010. Um, so yeah, 11 years ago. Um, I, it was not successful. Um, I uh, uh, the the only thing I observed was that uh, that the Gale chip inside the Amiga 1200 uh, was just crashing, and um, I didn't have any idea why and um, uh, yeah I didn't really follow up because um, I, I was thinking well uh, this is really everything I can do um, and uh, yeah uh, no chance I, uh, I, I couldn't um, uh, I didn't have any idea what uh, what to do about it to, to fix it and um, yeah quite a few years later with the 1233n um, I had uh, an idea of how to keep uh, Gale from crashing with uh, with the sequence of signals. I, I guess that's probably going going too deep if I explain what I'm doing exactly there. But um, uh, the essence is um, I am uh, I am starting the access and I'm actually executing the access um, without actually telling Gale that I'm doing that. I don't know if uh, so. Um, 
that worked out. Um, it is considerably faster, and um, I have made that a standard with uh, pretty much everything that you can plug to the Amiga 1200 port there. So uh, the IDE acceleration is in the 1233N, the new 12, uh, 1233N. Um, it is uh, in the 1221LC, and it's also in the plain memory expansion in the uh, 1211. And uh, of course, it is also in the 1234. Um, so you can uh, you can not only have a, a fast CF card that is local on the unit here, um, but you can also accelerate the internal IDE. And um, uh, th this can be combined, uh, and it can be uh, switched in software. So that's um, yeah, uh, like I said, I've, I've just made it a standard on um, on my uh, accelerators now. Um, I wouldn't really call it magic, but uh, yeah, if it feels like that, I mean, if it, yeah, you know what they say about technology that's sufficiently sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, we'll call it magic for now. It's fantastic. Um, and then uh, we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes. So uh, I did want to ask if you had an update on the Buster 12 project that you announced last year. Um, yeah, we started it. Um, Dave and I are working on this, um, but uh, as you can imagine, um, I mean, it's it's not uh, Dave's full-time job, and um, it has been a very, very busy year for him as well. Um, so uh, similar to what I uh, explained um, earlier here, um, he was really busy, like putting out fires um, uh, because because of chip shortage and, and other shortages. I mean, uh, we, we talked about chip shortage all the time, but uh, if you want, I can uh, um, elaborate on on other shortages um, because uh, yeah, um, he, he's an engineer in uh, 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 for his day job, of course, and um, uh, he couldn't spend that many hours. Um, we do have a working schematic. We have a plan on, uh, on how to adapt it. Um, maybe uh, you've, you've heard the, um, the, the tower term uh, for, for anything that replaces a chip. Nice. So that, that's going to be uh, the form factor. Um, uh, if you want to uh, imagine something, then you could take the uh, ACE2B product that um, I, I believe I actually announced that last year um, uh, with, uh, uh, within the interview here. So that's about this, uh, the way that it's going to look. Um, I don't have anything to show today, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing project, not forgotten. And um, yeah, uh, like with so many things, COVID-related and, and shortage-related, um, but uh, it, it's going to work. One quote uh, that I would like to, to share with uh, from Dave is like, yeah, um, when he started on it, he said, yeah, I know why nobody has done it yet. It's not <laughs> trivial. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, I know that um, it'll be it'll lovely to see, especially as we've got all the uh, re-Amiga technologies and, and just opens up more possibilities and improvements for... Uh, you know, building the hardware and, and making the systems even more stable, which is absolutely amazing. Well, uh, anything else you want to you wanna part with? I, I don't know if there's any questions here in the room. I'm looking around. Unfortunately, the pizza's arrived here, so the... Uh oh, okay, then uh, let's, let's keep it short. I mean, um, uh, the, it, it, you're based in America, and uh, shipments to the United States have been delayed ever since COVID has hit. And um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to announce that we have UPS as our new, um, uh, as our new partner, shipping partner. And um, we have almost sorted out the, uh, uh, the paperwork stuff that, uh, that UPS needs for automatic uh, transmission of uh, customs information. And that means um, probably before the end of the month, we can uh, we can make express shipments using UPS from Germany to the United States probably within two days. So wow. if you order if you order today, um, UPS is going to have it at your house in two days. Well, if if you choose the express option, uh, express saver is of course a little bit slower. We did ship the very first parcel on Thursday. Um, and uh, it didn't arrive yet, but uh, I expect it to arrive either on Monday or Tuesday. 
So um, with that Express Saver option, um, I'm expecting that uh, the, the whole shopping experience, especially for US-based and, and Canadian customers, is going to be a lot better because uh, all the shipping partners that we had in the meantime, uh, they were all pretty slow on their end and then handing it over to USPS in the United States. And um, they weren't really interested in, uh, um, in, in, in uh, transporting these parcels really quick, it appeared like. So uh, customers often had to wait like three or four weeks, sometimes even longer. And um, I hope that uh, U UPS can, uh, can improve that situation. Great. Well, no, I'm excited to hear that. Um, like you say, uh, most people who care have a couple accelerators, so I might have to send back that uh, 1233. Oh, did we, uh, we lost the audio on your side. Uh, did you uh, still oh, hear you're me? Back. You're back now. Uh, anyway, I'm back? I'm going okay. to send Good. you back that 1233 and have you turn it into a 1234 for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank yeah, you. Uh, let me look at my list. Um, C64 cases shipping again, but uh -huh. that's um, um, yeah, that, that's especially interesting in combination with the UPS thing because these cases are so big that neither DHL nor Parcel One will take them. So uh, UPS is the only choice. Um, another one, uh, yeah, Indivision ECS V3 is back in stock. Um, that, that was also in my news um, uh, these past months. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, or do you want to go to your pizza? I, I don't see if we have any. Uh, there was a question on an update on the 1200 Reloaded on YouTube. Unfortunately, no updates there. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, again, not forgotten. Um, that's uh, it's one of the long term projects. Well, I'm also looking forward to that one. I, I'm glad it was uh, it was asked. Uh, and then there was a question about an I2C controller, a cheap I2C controller. I squared C. Um, I wouldn't even know what to be, what to use that for. I remember that um, uh, Michael Böhmer has uh, has made a design, and uh, he might have even made it um, uh, open source. Um, but that's like I don't know, 20 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, I think actually someone has a clock port version of that, and uh, what they've done is they've put on the temperature sensor. I think Amiga Kit is selling that. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, well, temperature sensor, I, I, um, I mean, with, with the low-end Amigas up to 68030, I doubt that this is actually required. And with the higher end, like uh, uh, 040 and 060, um, I would say this is the task of the card. Um, the ACA 1240, 1260 has its local temperature sensor and uh, temperature regulated fan. So um, uh, why would you add an I2C um, and uh, yeah, let, let people tinker um, with something non-standard? I would, I would say it's, it's the task of the uh, um, uh, accelerator vendor to, uh, to keep everything cool because everything else inside the H1200 doesn't require special cooling. Well, by the time you get a rapid road and, and a few other cards in there, it starts to get pretty tight. So, <laughs> especially if you want to keep the case on. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and there's another question about some of your older products, like the Cat Weasel. Uh, do you have any thoughts of bringing those back for sale? Maybe some of the USB cards? Um, I get that question quite a lot, but I, uh, I don't have the time. Um, the uh, um, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't make this a USB thing because uh, the whole reason why the Cat Weasel Mark IV is not available anymore, why I stopped making that, was that uh, making 64-bit Windows drivers was next to impossible. We even had support from companies that had uh, full Microsoft support. And even they couldn't help us uh, compile uh, the drivers that we made for 32-bit um, uh, for the 64-bit uh, versions of the uh, of, of, of Windows, and um, uh, we would have the same problem if I switched to USB. Uh, so um, I would rather choose a different um, uh, interface that would be network, 
and um, uh, make it uh, more like a standalone device. Um, I have a pretty elaborate concept for that already, but uh, yeah, uh, once again, time is uh, is my biggest problem, and um, I couldn't even say when I can start this uh, this project. Um, if you have any floppies, um, keep them in a safe place, uh, uh, dry, not too cold, not too warm, just room temperature, and. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, uh, well, one thing I, I actually thought about was um, to, to bring the cat weasel for the Amiga back. Um, but uh, again, that's, that's also something I've only thought about, haven't, uh, haven't really made plans. Um, so, yeah, can't, I, I can't promise too much here. Cool. Um, one last question, uh, just looking at the, the list here. Um, Cami was asking about uh, the USB. So just for, for everyone, I know the Rapid Roads are still available, and so is the XSurf 100, correct? So you can buy a USB yep. card. It has Ethernet built in, effectively, or depending how you look at it. Ethernet with USB or USB with Ethernet, but it is available still from your site, right? Correct, yes. Yep. Um, one thing I did earlier this year was I have quit making the clock port version of Rapid Road because um, the amount of returns I got has crossed the magic 6% barrier. And um, I was just fed up uh, with, uh, with having to tell people uh, either, yeah, you, you connected it the wrong way around or you shifted the connector or you didn't connect the, uh, the grounding cable and, and all that kind of stuff. So there, there's just a huge number of reasons why uh, the USB version of Rapid Road um, uh, broke uh, for many people. Um, of course, uh, for more people, um, uh, the, the amount of service work we had to do on, um, uh, on Rapid Road, especially the, uh, the clock part version was just insane. I just decided I, 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 I shouldn't do this anymore because um, uh, some customers um, will just never accept that they made a mistake. And um, I, I even got answers like, yeah, but I want my plexiglass case and it's going to look ugly if I add the shielding. And um, if, I, uh, if I need to tell these people, yeah, if, if you don't use the shielding, I mean, it, it has an electrical function. If you remove it, then the whole system becomes unstable. And um, if, if I only get answers like, yeah, but it works, then yeah, I, I really don't want to discuss this. Um, so I decided not to make any clock port device um, for the Amiga anymore. And this unfortunately includes USB, the rapid road. But I do have another idea um, of how to bring USB to the Amiga 1200, which I will most likely uh, start next year, early next year. So next time we talk, I am, uh, I, uh, so for, for next Amy West, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I have very high hopes of uh, showing you a prototype or even um, showing you final specs. Cool, well definitely, I'd imagine the 1235 with USB ports is not what you're talking about. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, USB, USB is going to be separate uh, from, from the accelerator because um, it is useful for everyone with every speed. Um, so I, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't want to, um, uh, to put that into an accelerator. Cool. Well, thank you, Jens. Appreciate your time today. Uh, I know it's late Thanks there. for having me. The applause from the, the folks here and everyone to the YouTube stream. Thank you for dialing. We're actually going to uh, uh, take a break um, for lunch. Uh, those times might be wrong. Um, take, a, take a break for uh, lunch here at the, at the show. I'm going to eat, and then we'll come back at 3 o'clock here at, uh, at Amy West. So, uh, yeah, those are a little long. I'll fix it later. Anyway, thank you so much, Jens. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.